I'm Arturo Keller, and I'm co-director of the UC Center for Environmental Implications of Nanotechnology. I work at UC Santa Barbara at the Brent School of Environmental Science and Management, and I've been here for almost 17 years. Yeah, so broadly my research has to do with uh, the exposure to pollutants and how much people and different organisms in the environment are exposed to pollutants. And I try to understand both what are the sources of these pollutants, how do they get into the environment, and what amounts do they get out there, and then also what happens to these pollutants over time, how do they get distributed, uh, if they go into the atmosphere first, do they land on land, in oceans, in rivers, and then also why to understand how they uh, transform in the environment, so the fate and transport we call that. So I do all the exposure assessment and fate and transport both within my broader research and within the CEIN. So I'm looking at understanding in the case of nanomaterials, where are we applying these materials? What are the key applications that they're being used in? Uh, for example, cosmetics or paints, coatings, electronics, medicine, all these different applications. And then how likely are they to be going from that application out into the environment uh, and in contact with, with people as well? So within our theme, there's two things that I'm really excited about. One thing is we've just put together a very large global uh, analysis of how nanomaterials are getting into the environment uh, as they come out and uh, what are the applications, what's the production rate globally, what are the applications, and then what are the releases. And we've taken it just recently from the global level to the regional level to the country level and even to the regional level. So for example, we can tell you what are the emissions at, at, at for the entire world, for the North American region, for the US, and we've just put together an analysis for the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. Just as an example, to try to get an idea of what are the concentrations of different nanomaterials that are, are getting out there. So that was one that's a very exciting new uh, research. The other one is working with other themes, for example, themes uh, four and five on the exposure to organisms. Uh, we're understanding much better how nanomaterials go from getting into the environment, getting to the waters, then migrating onto phytoplankton, how they attach to phytoplankton, then how they get eaten up by uh, mussels or by fish, and so how they move up through the food chain and at what rate are they accumulating if so, and which ones are materials that are likely to accumulate more than others. And that helps us also to understand what will be the toxicity that then these other themes look at. Yes, so I think it's, uh, society is asking for all of these new technologies, including nanomaterials, what are the concerns? What should we be worried about? And we're trying to help answer the question of how likely is it for someone to be exposed to these nanomaterials? How likely is it in the environment to find these nanomaterials? Uh, at what concentrations? and for how long will they last? And so those are the types of questions that we're trying to address with our research. And that then goes into decision-making for policymakers, uh, trying to understand the risks. Once we know the exposure, and we put that together with the hazard, the toxicity, what are the risks that are involved with these nanomaterials? So that's, I think that's our, our main contribution. We're also helping uh, the agencies that are regulatory agencies try to understand what are the tools, and that's another discovery that we have recently, what are some of the tools that we can use to measure these concentrations out in the environment? And so our theme is working also on some of these questions. How do we uh, analyze environmental samples and get information that we can use for regulatory purposes? So starting out as to how I got involved in, in environmental issues in general, uh, I grew up in Mexico City, uh, and as many people know, Mexico City has terrible pollution. Both air pollution, which is very visible, and water pollution, which as you drive around, you, you see a lot. And working in industry there, I, I got involved in a lot of different types of remediation and looking for new technologies, and that's what got me in, involved in the environmental field. So when I, after I, I finished my, uh, my doctorate, I decided to focus on water quality issues, so I felt that at that point I could make a big contribution on the water side. And we began to work on uh, different types of uh, pollutants. Some of them were being transported by very small particles, by clay particles and others in the environment. And that led us uh, quickly to smaller and smaller particles, and that's how we got, that's how we got into nanoparticles. Uh, and in fact, it was a conversation with people at UCLA that got us going into setting up the UC Toxic Substances Research and Teaching Program focused on nanotoxicology. Uh, where we decided that this was an area that was up and coming and that we really need to have much more information and that this would be a very good seed project to then go and, and obtain uh, further, further funding. Okay. 
so in terms of what motivates me as a researcher is you're doing everything, everything every day is something new. Uh, you have new questions, uh, you're going about your daily business and all of a sudden something pops into your mind and you say, oh, that's an interesting research question. And, and that's what really is exciting, that you, you don't have uh, anything that bounds you in terms of what you're going to be working on and that provides you with a, a very uh, fertile environment for, for innovation. And the other exciting part is working with our really fantastic students. I really enjoy having conversations with our PhD students, our master's students, our postdocs, and even undergraduates that work in our laboratories, and get to hear about what they just found out. And they get excited, and at different levels, it also gets me excited in terms of this is something that I see the potential for this becoming a, a major new finding, a new idea, something else that we can work on. So I think those are the reasons why I come you know, very gladly to work every day, because it's such a motivating environment. So some of the things I really enjoy when I'm not here at the, at the friend school is to get out there and go hiking. I, I really enjoy going outdoors. Uh, I love to go, you know, whether it's here in five, ten minutes, we're up in the mountains, uh, whether it's just going through a park, even going through a, an old neighborhood here in Santa Barbara, that's really kind of fun to do, just walk around and, and, and see things. Uh, I also do a lot of gardening, so, you know, that has its ups and downs. You get all sort of, also sort of excitement in the spring, and then the summer comes forward, and, you know, your plants are not doing the way they expect, but, you know, it's still very motivating. It helps to, to unwind uh, with that kind of thing. I enjoy music. I enjoy wines. I, I enjoy tasting wine, so sometimes we go up to the wine uh, region here in Santa Barbara and enjoy a, a good afternoon uh, tasting different wines.